Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. All the praises due to Allah and I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. My brothers and sisters, we were talking about the barriers that keeps you away from Allah. Now, we are talking about one of those barriers which is so common amongst us. This barrier is ghafla, a state of oblivion, of forgetfulness. How you can understand or realize that me or you or anybody has that a state of ghafla? Because it's one of the worst diseases of the heart that keeps you far away from reaching the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you far away of tasting the sweetness of Iman, tasting the sweetness of the prayers, tasting the sweetness of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord who created you and who showered you with mercy during the month of Ramadan. The state of ghafla is realized by the saying of Ibn al-Qayyim who said that you should test, test your heart in three different situations. Number one, when the name of Allah is mentioned in front of you. Number two, when the Quran is recited before you. And number three, during the prayers. Do you feel that your heart is still alive or it is dead? Do you shed the tears? Do you reflect to the verses which are recited? Or you just pass them away and they do not have any trace in your heart. This is very important. Allah subhanahu wa talked about the believers. Thus when the name of Allah is mentioned, they have their hearts trembling, shivering, out of fear from Allah. Because this name rem reminds them about punishment in the hereafter. It reminds them about long standing before him. It reminds them about the shortcomings that they had in this life. It reminds them of a long journey that they take to the Lord and they have short provisions. Ali ibn Abi Talib used to say, and he used actually to talk to himself in a form of accountability. Ahin min safar wa wahshat tariq he used to say, Woe to me of the long trip I take to my Lord. Woe to me, I have very short provisions. Woe to me, the road is very dangerous. I'm saying this for myself. Woe to me, I do not have the amount of hasanat that will save me in the longest standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the believer contemplates about those meanings in the prayers, when the name of Allah is mentioned, or when the Quran is recited, tranquility ascends to his heart, and his iman is raised, and he becomes vigilant. He becomes re realizing, recognizing his, his trip to this life. He recognizes where he is going, and how did he handle his life in the past, and how he corrects himself and rectifies his past, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, there are four things that help the shaitan or help you to keep yourself away from your Lord. There are four points or four soldiers that are well weaponed and they have shields and swords and weapons keeping you away from your Lord. The first enemy is the Satan, is the Shaitan. The second enemy is an nafs yourself. The third enemy is Al-Hawa, the desire. And the fourth is Al-Hawa, the desire. The desire that is embedded in the heart. 
So the scholar said, how should I fight against all those soldiers? First of all, you need to fight against the shaitan by seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not a simple refuge. It is a sincere refuge from, Allah, from yourself and from the shaitan against the shaitan through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladheena, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about the believers and he said, إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُونَ Those who are afflicted with a whispering of the shaitan or an insinuation of the shaitan, they remember and they return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Yusuf alayhi salam was put in the dilemma on the test of being seduced and attracted by the wife of Al-Aziz. What is the key answer of the question in this story? The key is Allah. I seek refuge in Allah. So when he sought the refuge in Allah in a sincere way, Allah subhanahu made him in another test. And all the women came back again. And they tried to seduce him. And then he said, Rabb as-sijnu ahabu ilay. Oh my Lord, going to the prison is better than committing this adultery or this fornication. My brothers and sisters, how to fight against yourself by following the truth and being against it all the time. So when yourself likes to eat excessively, you violate it and you deprive it through hunger and fasting. Yourself needs actually to go in vacations here and there and look at the naked women and the uh, the, the, the images which are not proper here and there. You scruple and you control it and you do not like it to go. Yourself doesn't like to stay in the masajid. So you keep it and you prison it. You try to force it. This is simply to keep yourself on the track. Yourself likes you to violate all the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you try to go with yourself in a way which is like a person calming, calming another person down. Like saying, be patient for a while. Like a person going in the desert. And he sees actually, and he's very thirsty and he's going to die. So he saw a, a, a well or a mirage in a long distance. So he says to himself, wait for a while, you are accessing some water. So when he reached the mirage, he found another well which is very close. So he told his soul, he's telling his soul, wait for a while. If you are patient for it just five minutes or ten minutes you will reach another will which is better and good so when he reaches that will he will be also patient to himself and say be quiet and patient you are going to drink from zamzam wait and then when he reaches zamzam he will tell himself be patient because you are going to reach the jannah you are going to receive a sip of water from the handful of your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You are going to meet the companions, Umar and Uthman, Abu Bakr and Ali, and all of those blessed companions of the Prophet sallam to hug them, to receive them because of your patience. This is the way of how to make a policy with yourself. How to control the internal desires. To control the internal desires by burning them on the stove of fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you taste the true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sweetness of Iman, you will hate committing a sin. You will hate being yourself or seeing yourself in such a situation which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. How to control all of those things and how to control the dunya, for example, the worldly life or the love of this dunya, to control it of, by renouncing it by sitting it behind yourself and make sure of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَنْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ هَمِّهِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ فَقْرَهُ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ Whoever makes the dunya or the worldly life as his main goal or main intent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him poor all the time. He will see nothing in front of his eyes but poverty. He will never ever feel quenched by this life. He will feel thirst for money and money and money. And if he's given a, a mountain full of gold, he likes to get another mountain and a third mountain. And nothing will fill his eyes except the dirt or the dust. 
And woman cannot till Akhira to Akbar Hammi. And whoever makes it the Akhira, the worldly, the, the hereafter, as his main intent and goal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide him with ghina nafs. Allah will provide him with self contents. He will, he will feel that he is the richest person on the face of the earth. He is pleased with Allah. He is pleased with what is given. He is praising Allah. He is a person that's satisfied by just praying two rak'ats in the middle of the night. When we control our dunya, our worldly life, control the shaitan, the satan, control our desire and hawa and nafs and soul, we will reach to another stage. This is stage of tasting the sweetness of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, Allah has a Jannah in this world. The garden of paradise is in the heavens. And the believer will not reach it until he tastes some of its traces here in this life. What kind of traces? These are the traces of ibadah, of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning of Ibn Taymiyyah. What Ibn Taymiyyah said? Ibn Taymiyyah was put in the prison. So when his enemies brought him, he said a statement which is very critical. Because when he, they brought him and he mingled with the criminals, the people surrounded him and he became a source of mercy and guidance for, for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided those criminals and they didn't like actually to leave the prison. But when they left, they are the source of the seeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put for the ummah and guided the ummah through those criminals. So Ibn Taymiyyah said when he was in the prison, I swear by Allah, if I spend gold equal to the whole of this world, it is not enough to compensate those people who put me in the prison. How it comes? Yes, he would like actually to compensate those people who put him in the jail. Yes, because he said, what my enemies can do with me. If they drive me away from my land, it is tourism. It is, I'm towering, I'm wandering in the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm pondering over them. If they put me in the prison, I have a state of seclusion, being away from the people and drawing myself closer to Allah, mentioning Him and refreshing my heart with the love, with the water of life, the water of this heart. And if they are punishing or persecuting me, this is a trial and this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This in brief are the barriers that keeps you away from your Lord. When you reach His pleasure, when you reach this sweetness of Iman during Ramadan, during Taraweeh, you will feel what I'm talking about. I ask Allah to shower His tranquility upon our hearts and to accept all of our deeds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah. The pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan.